Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring this tutorial where I'm going to be teaching you guys everything you need to know about Stout Components. So for those who don't know, Stout Components is actually a React library or more well known as a CSS library which allows you to style individual components and apply them directly in your React application. And it is a technology that I use in every single um, one of my React projects. So I 100% recommend it. And for that reason, I, I'm really excited to actually teach you guys this. So if you're a beginner, um, I'm going to go over the beginning part. So like everything you need to know in the beginning, um, really quick, because it isn't actually really hard to understand uh, style components. But the thing is, um, there are so many different use cases or so many different specific things that you will encounter as you create a React application that uh, usually is really hard to understand from the documentation. So I will go over how to solve those problems and show you guys exactly exactly how to do it. And before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed, I would really appreciate it because it definitely helps the algorithm push my video to more people, which will massively help our channel grow. So that's basically it. Let's get started with the tutorial. Okay, guys, so as you can see right here, we have a empty React application. Here at the, the left, you can see um, we have just um, a couple files inside of our React. Um, we have app.css, app.js, index.js, and reportwebvitals.js. I just ran create React app and I created this application. One thing that I want to do is we're going to delete this app.css. It's not <laughs> necessary. If you, you can have a CSS file in the same um, React application as like that you're using re style components. However, I just want to delete it to show you guys that we're not going to use any CSS directly. Like we're not going to have any CSS files in our project. Everything will be done from style components. So the first thing we have to do is we have to install the library. So I'm going to open up here the terminal and I'm going to push this a bit. And instead of this folder, I'm going to run yarn add styled components like this. If you're using npm, it's just npm install styled components. Very simple. There's a dash right here in the, between the words, and it will install the library. So as it is installing, um, I'll go over what exactly um, styled components do, right? So for example, you can see we have here a div with a class name of app, right? So in CSS, what would usually happen is you would basically just have um, this app that you would access this class name in your CSS file, and you would style it however you want. However, with styled components, you can style it in a like directly through the library. And you can have something like a, a literally a component called app like this, which um, wraps around uh, an item and it doesn't have like you don't need to write div it knows automatically the app is a component that is a div but inside of it there's already the styles are already inside of here so you can just reuse the same component many times and it makes your code look a lot better but if you're a beginner you won't really understand what it means right now so let's actually get started in the implementation so so what I like to do is I like to come here to my SRC and create a folder called components and this right here um, can hold like the components for whatever you want to create. Um, let's create right now um, a component for um, a button. Let's do that. So you can create here a file called button.js um, like this. And honestly, whenever I'm creating a, a JavaScript file that is solely based on styling, so for example, when you're using styled components, I like to also put before the JS and after the name of the file, a style like this or styles, whatever you want. Um, it knows automatically just so it can identify what kind of um, file this is, right? And inside of here, what we can do is we can write all the logic for creating a button. So what we want to do is we want to create a button that uh, and put the styles directly using styled components and display it in our app, right? So to do that, we need to import the styled components library. So I'm going to say import styled from styled components like this. And this styled object right here, it basically serves as um, an identifier to which HTML element you want to style. So what do I mean by that? Well, imagine you want to create a button, right? Let's create this variable right now. Um, I'm going to say const button. So this is the name of the component you want to create. You set it equal to styled and then you press a dot and you just choose what HTML item you want to like make it represent, right? There's every single HTML item here. But in this case, we want to make it a button. So I'll just say button. And automatically, when you render this in your in your screen, it will know that it has it is a button with all the button functionalities. And one thing that is important as well is um, how do you actually put the styles, right? Well, with styled components, it is kind of annoying, but you need to put those back ticks like this. And I like to just 
give it some space, put the back tick, back tick over here and the back tick over here, and you write the CSS inside of here. So for example, if you want to set the width equal to um, 200 pixels, I can do it like this. And you may be wondering, okay, but why is your, um, like whatever you're writing inside of here, not yellow, right? Because my, like, it's not being, it's not looking like a string, right? The reason for that is because I installed an extension, which I definitely recommend you guys installing if you're going to use styled components. It is called VS Code Styled Components right here. Um, it's really awesome. Basically, it just converts like whatever is written in between this back ticks to actually like look like CSS to to auto complete as well. So I definitely recommend installing this package if you want to. It is really nice. So what you do is you just put all the styling inside of here. So let's create a button with with 200 pixels a height of like, I don't know, 50 pixels. And let's make the background color like this be um, something like um, red, right? You can literally just do it like this. And when we save this, we also want to export this so that we have access to this in other files. So we're going to have like, we can make many different buttons and put all the buttons over here and just export them individually. And I'll show you guys how to do that later. But if I want to use this um, button component, I can come to my app over here, and I can import from um, the file that I created inside of components right here, button.style. And I can import the button component as you can see. And now instead of like, I'll just delete this right here. Um, if I want to render this button right now, you'll see that it doesn't show anything. Let me refresh the page. Um, it just shows in a blank page. But if I put the button over here like this, and I actually put something inside of here, like um, click this button, like similar to how you would create a real button, you can see that we actually have the button and it functions like a button, I can click on it. Um, and it works but it is styled. So what means is that I can actually copy this and just create the button like a couple times and I don't need to write the CSS code um, or at least I don't need to put the same CSS um, class name in the button and it looks a lot nicer in my opinion because we don't need to be passing class names to the items. So this is the basic use case for styled components and there's many different things you can do but it's also important to understand um, how to differentiate um, different items like very easily. And what do I mean by that is we're going to create three different buttons right here. Um, we're going to create a blue button, um, a blue button. And I'll just copy this again, I'll paste it over here. And we're going to create a green button and a red button like this green button, and a red button like this. So we're just going to change the color for all of them. So I'm going to make this blue, I'm going to make this green, and I'm going to make this red. So what happens is now at the top here, I can import a red button, the green button, and the blue button. And now I just have this components in, in my in my project. And let me just show each one of them. So you guys can see um, what is happening to them, you'll see that they actually are displayed. However, there's a more efficient way of doing this, we don't really want to create like a whole new component over here, just for um, changing basic stuff like the color, right? What we want to do is we want to be able to just create one component called button and customize it however we want, almost as if we're passing props to this component. So how do we do that? That's something that a lot of people get confused on. And I'll show you guys how exactly to do this. So if you want, we're just going to delete this right here. Um, we're going to delete, we're just going to create one button. And we're going to accept props inside of this button for the background color. And to do that, we have to come over here and use the JavaScript syntax to insert um, JavaScript inside of a string. Because remember, we are inside of a string, there are back ticks over here. And inside of here, what we have to do is we have to call a function, which takes in an argument called props. And we just um, put the arrow function. And over here, we can access um, values in our props, which we haven't passed yet, but we can pass a values inside of the components right here. I'm going to delete um, these two components, I'm just going to call this button again, because we changed it um, button. And let me just delete this as well, and just import button. So the idea is, um, we're going to pass something like color equal no, I'm, I'm going to call it background color like this, and we're going to pass something like um, red, or blue or whatever we want, we don't want to specify it on our component, we want to specify it right here, if we want to differentiate the colors, right. So what we can do is we can come over here and say that the name of the prop is background color, like this. And 
this over here will be shown as the background color that we put over here. So let's test that. Let's come over here to our Google Chrome. You can see that our button is red, which means it's working, right? But now if I want to make this blue, what do we do? I'll just copy this. I'll paste it over here and I'll change this to blue. And now we should have a red and a blue button, as you can see. And we can do this for whatever we want. I can make this a violet, as you can see. Um, we can just change colors. And this is exactly how you actually pass props, which is a, which which is amazing in my opinion. Um, I, this is one of the reasons why I love this library. It's very simple to actually um, customize everything and make your code very organized. One thing that is important as well is to keep into account that basically most style components project, every single thing in the HTML or in the JSX will be um, components, right? So for example, right now we have this div right here called app. And it's wrapping around everything because it's kind of like the container of our website. It's like the whole page, right? But and usually we don't do that. What we do is we can create, for example, over here, a file called container dot style js and container is just like you can call it whatever you want but i call it container it's just to represent a div that wraps around a whole page or it, just representing like a div that doesn't show anything right so what i can do is i can come over here and again i'm going to import the same stuff i imported over here i'm actually just going to copy this and paste it over here and i'm going to call this container or app container yeah and instead of being a button i can make this a div and over here, I can make the width of this be to be like, um, I don't know, 100 VW, which means 100% of the screen. And this will be 100 V8, which means 100% of the vertical screen. And let's change the background color to something like, um, actually, I won't pass props to this one. I'll just pass like a simple background color. Let's make it light blue, um, light blue, like this. And what we can do is we can import this at the top. So import from dot slash components slash container dot style. And we can access this app container here at the top app container. And instead of using this div, we can just use an app container over here. And we can just copy this paste it over here. And now we don't actually have anything in our screen. It, it looks ugly, I know, but that, that's not the point. I'm not going to teach you guys um, how like how to work with CSS. I'm just showing you how to use this library to make your code a lot more organized. Now, there's actually something that I haven't mentioned yet, but I know that if you're starting to learn style components, you will encounter it really fast and you won't know how to resolve it. And what I'm talking about is what if, for example, I want to add a hover effect to this button or uh, like an active effect or I want to add animations. How do I do this kind of stuff? Well, it's, it's quite simple. You, you come here to the button and if you actually want to add a hover event, all you do is you just add um, the sign over here, which I forgot the name. Then this basically represents like I'm talking about the button that I'm inside of. So this right here. So you just put this, then you put a colon and the effect you want. So I want to hover, right? And you just act as if this was an actual CSS file. So what I'm saying right here is basically whenever this button right here is hovered, I want to, for example, change the background color to, um, let's say, coral. It's just a random color. So let's see if this works. Um, if I hover on this, you can see this is exactly what happens. And you can do this for every single property. Um, I can I can change this to active, which basically means whenever I press on it, and I accidentally did this, whenever I press on it, it's going to change the color. As you can see, um, it works perfectly. And also, one thing that I know a lot of you guys will be wondering is imagine, for example, I have in this um, button over here, um, I want to actually change this right here. I want to create a kind of a, a component just for this text. I can call it text, I can call it I don't know, title, button text, whatever I want. And actually, I'll create it inside of this over here. I'll just say export const. Um, I'm going to call it button label. And it's just going to be a simple, um, how can I say? It's going to be a simple h1 tag. So it's not going to be dot button, it's going to be dot h1. It's just a simple header tag. And I want to put it inside of the um, button. Actually, I'll, I'll make this a label just because I'm calling it label, right? Um, so it's just a simple text. And I want to say something like um, the font size is equal to like 25 pixels. And the color is um, white. Let's do it like this. And now let's just import this here at the top um, button label. 
And now let's implement this over here. Um, button label. And I'll just implement it on the first one so you can see the difference between them. Um, button label right here. So you can see that um, one of them obviously has this label into their the button and the other one doesn't. Um, but what I actually wanted to show is how do I, for example, how do I say that if, I, if I'm hovering the button, which is a different component, I'm hovering this right over here, how do I change the color for the label, which is something inside of it? They're completely different. How can I actually access and change um, stuff from this label when I'm like hovering this button right here, if you know what I mean? What I can do is I can actually use this right here. And if I say I can actually use this right here and say, for example, on hover. And instead of here, I can just put again, um, this symbol to represent that I'm talking about this. And I can put some space and say that I want to access um, whatever label is inside of this element. So this just says similar to CSS, you're just saying, okay, I want to access the label inside of this button. And now you can put whatever you want inside of here. So I can, for example, change the color for the label to be green, whenever you hover the button. So let's look at this. Um, let's come over here. If I hover this button, you can see that the, the label, which has nothing to do, it's a completely different component, is still changing the color, which is amazing. Um, it works perfectly. And yeah, that's basically it for how to use this symbol right here. Just try to picture it like this. Um, it's it's almost the same as CSS in the sense, right? Um, however, with CSS, you would do something like, um, I don't know, the class name. So uh, button something like this button, then put some space and then say label inside of it and do it like this, right? So it's almost the same thing. But instead, you're putting you're removing this and replacing it by this and putting it inside of um, the hover, right? So this is the basic idea. So now there is actually something extremely important, um, which is very useful, which is basically how do I style an actual component. And what do I mean by that is, we have this button over here, but it doesn't have any function like it doesn't have any functionality inside of it in the sense that um, we might want to create a component, which is a button, which is a different file, like it's a completely different file, we want to reuse it how many times you want. But we also want to style it, right? So how do we do that? Okay, so to do that, you can just come over here, and I'm going to create a file called button.js. And it's actually going to be a, a react component, as you can see right here. And inside of it, I'm just going to return a button like this. And this button will say something like, I can get, for example, um, the text, the, the, the button label like this, you can say something like button label as a prop, and just display it in our screen. So button label like this. And this is basically our button, right? We, we actually don't have any functionality, but this is our button, we could have added an on click here, we could have done whatever we want. But uh, what I'm trying to explain here is we're creating an external component, a react component, and we want to style it so that we display it in our in our app.js instead of actually just putting the the like style components directly. So to do that, what we can do is we can import this button react component to our button styles. So I'm going to come over here and say import um, from dot slash button. And I'm actually not going to put it like this, I'm just going to say button. And I just imported this um, component. And what we can do is instead of um, just creating this button like this, I, had, I can put over here that I want to make this a styled, then open and close parentheses, and just pass the component right here. And now it knows that um, this over here isn't of any HTML type, it is actually of the type button, which is a react component. So let's test this, let's let's come over here. And um, let's just do it like this, right? What we're doing is, um, let's delete actually both of this because now they aren't in the correct format. Let's just import button, and we're not going to use a button label because it is actually a prop that we have to pass to this right here. So if you write button label like this, you can pass a text over here saying something like click here. And this should work because we know that this styled button is of type button, which is a react component with button label as a prop. So let's check to see if this is working. Let's come over here. And let's refresh the page. Oh, I just realized that <laughs> I called it button twice. So we actually can't do that. I'm going to change this name to um, styled button. Uh, oh, no, not this one, I'm going to change the name for the styled button over here. So styled button like this, let's save this. And let's come over here and change this to styled button. 
and we can also come over here and pass the background color which is the color for the button um, let me just close this over here and let's just call it I don't know violet again just a random color because remember in our styles we have a prop called um, background color let's see if it's it still works as you can see it doesn't and the reason for why it's not working is because for some reason you actually have to come to your whatever component you want to create and you want to use as a as a stout component and you have to actually destructure from the props a prop called class name and then pass this as the class name <laughs> of the component so i'm just going to say like this and this over here will be the style this is representing whatever style we write over here so basically this is how we pass it to this component and now if you come over here you can see it's working perfectly um, the same color everything is working perfectly which means it is working now finally the last thing i think is actually really cool to to understand about style components is how to create global styles so global styles are just styles that aren't specifically for a component um it's basically like imagine you're styling the body of the html element or you're trying to style like stuff that aren't actually components right so how would you do that because there's many different ways of doing it um the documentation is quite confusing on it so this is how i would approach this problem i would actually create here um, a file called global styles it would be uh, like on the outermost layer of my application so global styles dot j dot styles dot js something like this um style.js and i would import here at the top um from styled components um they actually have something called create i'm just going to create it like this create global style and what you can do is you can just come over here and say export const global style so this is the style that you can put whatever you want inside of here that is going to affect the whole application and then call it create global styles and then just pass whatever css you want to pass over here so for example if i want to just access the body over here i can say okay body um, let's make the background color for the body mm, pink something like this let's also remove the margin and the padding because that that kind of irritates me i don't know if you guys realized but that's um kind of that's currently happening in our screen um, so padding zero pixels and you can see this is the difference this is how it is right now um now if we want to add this to our application what we can do is we can come here to the app.js and we can just import from dot slash global styles dot style and we can import the global styles component and instead of like um it's a bit different what you can do is you can just come over here and whatever like whenever you want like it doesn't matter where you're going to put this just put global styles like this and it doesn't have to be like you can just self um, close it as you can see right here when we save it our body will be actually um styled the color isn't appearing because we made the this container over here be um, this campaign container over here be 100 percent of the screen but if i made this like um, i don't know 90 i'm gonna make this 90 you'll see that the the body is it's pink right like we said <laughs> so yeah that's basically it this is how you add global styles and that's basically it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any doubts, please leave a comment down below. I answer every single comment. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like because I would really appreciate it. It massively helps grow the channel. And I'm putting a lot of work into this channel. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could help me grow. So yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.